Language is a critical part of how humans work with information, so we'll consider the nature of language. Human language is a system of communication specific to Homo sapiens. Most animals communicate, but they're only able to convey immediate concerns and concrete states, like being angry, threatened, hungry, hurt, or eager to reproduce. So what makes our system of communication different than other animals? Unlike boom or meow, most word sounds don't bear any relationship whatsoever to the things they're describing. So the words in human language are symbolic. These symbols differ between languages, so there's a lot of variation in the sounds different groups of humans use to communicate. There are about 5,000 languages spoken in the world today. We think of language as spoken or written, but some languages, like American Sign Language, are completely based on gestures. With so many forms of this symbolic system, human language is very flexible. This openness to communicate different meanings is probably the biggest difference between language and other forms of animal communication. All known humans use or have used language to communicate, and there are some universal rules amid all this variation. Lexicon refers to all the words in a language. This includes everything in the dictionary and everything that's not. Grammar refers to the set of rules for conveying meaning, using words from the language's lexicon. These two components provide the structure for language, so others who know the same system can understand. For instance, most plural words in English end with the letter S, while in Turkish, plural words end with either L-E-R or L-A-R. Even though grammatical details differ between languages, the use of these rules is universal. From these two foundational components, language is an incredibly flexible communication system and allows humans to talk about events not tied to the present moment. Let's consider some other components of language by using an example. Take this sentence, I talk too much. Although you can see there are four words here, there are more than four sounds. First is the I sound of the first word, then the T sound of T, the A sound of A, and the K sound of K. Note I didn't include the silent L, since it doesn't contribute to the sound of the word talk. In the word two, there's another t sound with t, and an oo sound from the two o's. Much starts with the m sound of m, then a from u, followed by the ch sound from ch. These are called phonemes, the smallest units of sound in a language. This sentence has four units of meaning. I is the subject of this sentence, talk is the action happening, two conveys excess, and much indicates amount. These are called morphemes, or units of meaning in the language. In this sentence, each word is also a morpheme, but that's not always the case. This similar sentence, I talked too much, has four words, but five morphemes. Can you find the extra one? The benefits of language as a communication system are obvious. It allows humans to talk about the past and future, and even things that have never happened. It allows us to easily share memories, and therefore knowledge. With 5,000 different languages, there are a lot of ways to say things. Does that mean there are different ways of thinking about things? There is some evidence for this by looking at how languages with different attributes influence people's judgments. Linguistic relativity, originally called linguistic determinism, is the idea that language influences the way we think. This perspective is also called the sapir whorf hypothesis after Edward Sapir and his student Benjamin Lee Whorf. Evidence to support this was mainly from comparisons of speakers of different languages. Some languages have more words in their lexicon to describe concepts like colors. So one approach is to compare participants' performance on a color categorization task. Whereas English only has one word for the color category blue, Russian has two words depending upon whether the blue is light or dark. One study asked native English and Russian speakers to categorize colors. They were shown a square, like the one on the top, 
and then had to choose one from a pair, shown on the bottom. For the Russian speakers, when the blues were in different color word categories, they made faster discriminations, but the English speakers did not. This shows, using an objective categorization task, that having words for a category made the task easier. So there is some evidence of an influence of language experience on perceptual tasks, but these differences tend to be small and restricted to certain types of tasks. That's why the term linguistic determinism fell out of favor and linguistic relativity is more commonly used. The structure of language and collection of words allow information to be shared with others. This allows for variability and flexibility that makes human language much more powerful than other animal communication systems.